everybody and welcome to another exciting installment of Wrestling Rampage. The two amigos are back in this bitch. That's right guys, we are back as we review WWF SummerSlam 1997 Heart and Soul. Heart and Soul. This is the pay-per-view review for you guys. Now we should mention that... Um, I, I'm pretty sure you can watch this on the Peacock. On yeah. the cock. On the cock. Uh, I think you could watch it uh, you know, in certain other ways. But we watched it on the DVD version of the uh, SummerSlam Anthology. Yeah, which is good enough. Which is which is the way we watched it. Yeah. So, uh, just to classify if there's any missing shit yeah. in this pay-per-view, then that's what it is. But, uh, Tommy, why are we why are we reviewing SummerSlam 97 for? Because I wanted to watch it. Because you wanted to watch it. Because, Tommy... The next pay-per-view for 2010 that we're going to be reviewing is SummerSlam 2010. Yeah, so I figured it would fit right in. So you decided, hell, we're going to do SummerSlam 97. Yeah, it fit right in. So here we go. WWF SummerSlam 1997 Heart and Soul. Heart and Soul. Pay-per-view review. August 3rd, 1997. Your birthday. My birthday. Uh, was uh, My birthday is August 3rd. And then in 1997, I turned 7. Yeah. So... Uh, nice, nice little thing. On commentary, we have Vince McMahon. Yes, with the with the with the trifocal. That's on. right. We got uh, Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler. And Jerry Lawler. It is sponsored by Stridex. Yes. Um, acne pads. That's right. Which uh, is still used today, by the way. Uh, Tommy, we're at the Continental Airlines Arena in East Rugford, New Jersey. Yes. Right there in, in Jersey. Right there in Jersey. Uh, Tommy, f first thing we get is the pyro. Yeah. Uh, which which is always nice to see pyro because you don't yes. really see it. You know you don't you don't see it much anymore. Yeah, you don't really see that much, uh, uh, much anymore. But let's go ahead and go, Tommy, with the first. There was no dark match. No. No dark matches for SummerSlam '97. We go straight into this match. Yes. It is a steel cage match. Now this isn't just a steel cage. This is the old school blue, blue cage the blue steel cage uh we have the 1997 king of the ring hunter hearst helmsley with china yes as he takes on mankind yes tommy <clears throat> we do know that uh before this match comes about uh there was a little skirmish between uh hunter hearst helmsley and mankind at uh uh, Canadian Stampede. Yes. Uh, which which is kind of what led to this match. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I was thinking, I was like, you know, Hunter, Mankind, this is probably going to be a pretty good match. Yeah. This is probably one of the best first matches or kickoff matches in SummerSlam history. Yeah, this I'm is, not joking. This is probably one of the best opening matches for SummerSlam mm -hmm. of all time. Uh, this was a fantastic match. Great fucking match. I really this was the best opening match I've seen for a SummerSlam. Uh, did you like the pile driver on Triple H? Oh yeah, <laughs> fucking man kinda picks him up, grabs him by the belt, that's shay big pile driver <laughs> <laughs> fucking trips his fucking feet is up in there. He got spiked Trips just fucking with his feet up in the air, bam! Big pile driver. Uh, China, uh, she grabs her belt and chokes uh, uh, mankind. Ma mankind with it in between the bars, uh, even to the point where mankind climbs. Yes, and he's to the top, and he's starting to climb down. Here comes China climbing up and punches him right in the fucking balls. Balls, him, balls <laughs> punch. China climbs right, punches mankind right in the nuts, right in the right, right in the gonads. And that's where he's stuck up there, and uh, Hunter Hearst Helmsley gets to the, uh, runs up to the top, and he does a uh, big, big, suplex. big superplex from the top of the cage. From the top of the cage, I was really like, impressive. And then after that, man, Triple H just goes to town on him. Oh yes, he st uh, he grabs him and starts fucking ramming his head into the fucking cage I, at least four or five times. Yeah. Um. And then. Uh, we see, uh, we see, uh, they get a fight on the turn, uh, on, on to the top rope. They're, they're punching yes. each other. 
And well, he eventually uh, <laughs> Hunter gets crotched. Yes, it's crotched, and his leg gets caught in the rope. Yes, it does. So mankind goes, you know what? This is go this is gonna be my time, and he starts climbing out, and he starts he climbs over, and he goes, huh? And then he rips off the mask. And he rips off the mask. He climbs to the top. Climbs to the top. And you know the shitty brown shirt that he Yeah, he wearing. rips the brown shirt. Yeah. And we see a painted up, used to be heart, but now it's just a red mark. Yeah. Big elbow from the top of the cage. Did you like to sell the job on by the On the Chandra Hurst Helm Slee. The big elbow from the top top of the cage. Shades of Don Morocco and Jimmy Snooker. Yes. And then, Mankind climbs to the cage. And China runs in, trying to get in the door. Well, Ch uh, well, they, they throw the uh, China throws the chair. Yeah, in the ring. China throws the chair in the ring. And uh, Triple H tried to use it, but he didn't get he didn't get to it because no. uh, um, Mankind did the slingshot to the yes. cage, and then he did the double R DDT onto yes. the chair, and China falls back off the off the cage. Yes. Um, Tommy, you remember when when uh, mankind was cl was about to climb through the door? Yeah. What happened? Well, China grabbed the door and just slammed it right into <laughs> mankind's face. It looked rough. Yes, it did. It looked rough. Um, and then Tommy, uh, after after the elbow. Yes. Uh, you said China's doing what? Well, China goes into the cage. She's trying to pull Triple H. Pull Triple H's carcass <laughs> while Mankind's climbing the cage. And Mankind jumps down before China pulls Triple H out of the uh, yeah, yeah, uh, out of the cage. So your winner, Mankind. With the, with the, with with the, the invisible heart. Yeah, yeah, with the invisible heart. With the red heart. mark. Yeah, with the red mark on the chest. And then you hear the do 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 <laughs> the goddamn piano music. Yeah, the piano music. And then it's all quiet. It's all quiet. <laughs> and and man man look at the mangled new mankind. Yeah, look at the mangled mankind. Look at the body of mankind. And mankind sitting there with his leg out. Yeah, and then he starts shaking his leg. We hear the dude love. Yeah, yeah, we hear the dude love. <laughs> then thing. he starts getting up, then he gets up, does a little walk, <laughs> then he goes to the goddamn guy dressed as dude love. <laughs> he gives him a hug. <laughs> <laughs> then he does this. <laughs> then he does the knees. Then thing. he does the knees, and that was about the end. And I love the slow mo of the elbow. Yes. When yes. dude, lo when mankind hit the elbow, you see trips the slow mo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this was a great match. This was probably the best opening SummerSlam match I've seen. But let's go with the next thing, Tommy. We see Todd Pettengill. Todd Pettengill, baby. He is going to be interviewing. Christine Whitman, and if you guys don't know who Christine Whitman is, she is the... She was the governor of Jersey at the time. Yeah, she was the governor of the Jersey at the time, and, well, she comes out with the headbangers and Gorilla Monsoon. Gorilla, baby. Gorilla. Uh, and pretty much what happened was uh, she actually abolished the tax for wrestling. Yeah, so wrestling could come into New Jersey. So wrestling come back in New All Jersey. Right, and, and, and Todd Pitt, go, let's welcome, what's her name again? Christine Whitman. Christine Whitman, boo! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, people were booing her at first. And she just goes, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, they give her a WWF championship. Yes, and uh, she goes, "I'll take on all covers." <laughs> yeah, and the crowd's like, "I don't give a fuck." Yeah, I don't give a fuck. As long as wrestling's here, I don't give a fuck what this girl does. So uh, you know that was a nice little segment. But um, next match, Tommy, we have. Brian F. and Pillman. The loose cannon. The loose cannon as he takes on Gold Dust with Marlena. Yes. Uh, we all know how this match comes about. Uh, you know, uh, he's been, uh, you know, trying to grab at Marlena. Trying to get at Marlena. Uh, he has been uh, pretty much putting down Dustin and, yep. and you know, attacking him after matches. Yes. And, and saying Dakota's his love child. Yeah, Dakota is... Uh, and by the way, Dakota's hot now, by the yeah. way, if you guys ever see her on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> she's hot. Uh, but... Uh, she uh, is a natural. She is a natural. <laughs> Naturals can be. <laughs> but... Um, uh, now, this comes... Uh, this comes at a cost. Yes. If Pillman loses... He'll leave the WWF forever. 
No? No, no yeah, where's the dress? Oh, yeah, where's the dress? What the fuck yeah. am I talking about? <laughs> wrong one there, Jerry. Yeah, wrong one. That was fucking some other fucking paper. Yeah. He had to get uh, hold us. Some of these matches with gold dust are a blur sometimes. <laughs> well, this match was kind of a blur. And uh, uh, if Brian Pillman loses, loses, he wears a dress on Raw. Yeah, he wears a dress on Raw. Now, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I'm going to have to say uh, not, this match was not good. It was not that good. But I, I have to say they, Gold Dust and Pillman did the best they could. Uh, you, know, you know, both these guys are capable. Are capable to have a good match. Uh, with anybody, yes. less, let alone each other. But you got to realize at this point... Pillman's hurt. Pillman's leg is fucked up. And, he, and he's still doing it. He's still wrestling. Yeah. Um, even to the point where he actually loosens his boot in the yes. match. Because his fucking leg, you know, his fucking, his fucking ankle's swelling. You can see. Swelling. Uh, he loosens his boot. Yeah, so I mean, it... it and then, Tommy, did you see the horrible uh, sunset flip attempt? Fucking Goldust goes for the sunset flip on Pillman. And he and, misses Pillman. And he misses Pillman. And Pillman's fucking doing this, trying to... It could be his ankle. Yeah. Or, or what, but he's trying. And then you see Pillman go over to the... Uh, grab the rope. And then Marlene, all she does is hit him with the, uh, with the purse. purse. And you see Pillman... Swole! The swole! Goes <laughs> over... Gold Dust pins him one, two, three, and now Brian Pillman's got to wear a dress. He has to wear a dress on Raw. And uh, once again, not really a great match. But, uh, but again, you know, at least Pillman's trying. Yeah, he's trying. Uh, but this ain't the Brian Pillman of WCW. Yes. He, yeah. He's hurt. And you could tell. You could tell. Uh, Tommy... Pillman attacks the mannequin that they have. Oh, yeah, he breaks that motherfucker. <laughs> he, he breaks the fucking mannequin down. He rips the dress you see, off. You see the head float, move, <laughs> fucking get out of the ring? Yeah, it fucking flew right out of the ring. And fucking Pillman just walks out. So we do know that he's going to be wearing a dress on Raw. Yes. Uh, next, uh, next match, Tommy, we have the Legion of Doom, Hawk and Animal, as they take on Phineas and Henryo, the Godwins. Yes. And this comes about when uh, LOD broke Henry Goblin's neck. Yeah, if you guys remember, I think it was on Shotgun Saturday Night. Yeah, well, you should know. You got uh, Shotgun. Yeah, I actually have all the Shotgun Saturday Nights. But uh, it was on Shotgun Saturday Night. Uh, they did a doomsday to Henry. And, well... He landed right on his neck. Yeah, he landed straight on his neck. Uh, broke a couple of vertebrae in his neck. Uh, he was out for a while. A long time. Uh, I'm not sure how long. Maybe, maybe close to a year. Uh, and then, uh, you know, he finally comes back because I, I believe that happened in 97. Yeah. Uh, or, or like late 96, whatever yeah. it was. But anyway, um, he comes back and they're, they're back with a vengeance. And once again, this match is not the greatest I match. I have to say something about the promo by LOD. Yeah. Before they, uh, had their match with the Goblins. Yeah, good. Fucking... Hawk goes, yeah, when we broke your neck, yeah, that was an accident. But what we do here is not going to be an accident. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what we're going to do here is not an accident. Uh, you brought it on yourselves. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, what happened last time was an accident. This won't be. Yeah, this won't be an accident. Uh, so, uh, you know, a little high for this match. And, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, LOD, uh, oh. even even at this time, yeah. they, they're still, they were still over. They were still over, and like uh, the Godwins, um, they not, were a decent team here. They were a decent team, and 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 uh, I have to say, but I enjoyed Lawler on commentary here. Remember, fucking uh, Jim Ross is talking about how they got an Arkansas degree, and fucking and fucking Jerry Lawler goes, "How did they get that degree? Married to your kin? <laughs> Married to your kin?" <laughs> but uh. Uh, some really good stuff there from Bitters, Arkansas. Yeah, and this match was what it was. Two big, tough fucking teams beating the shit out of each other. You know, say what you say about the God ones, but, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're two big, tough motherfuckers. Uh, That's what this match was. Two big, badass, tough-ass teams beating the shit out of each other. And that, and that's the way it was. Because, I mean... Nothing in the match was very... Nothing technically sound. <laughs> yeah. They were just beating the shit out of each yeah, other. Yeah, they just beat the shit out of each other. This, this Which, that's what made me like it. 
LOD, Tommy, they finally get uh, Henry. In, they focused on Henry. Yeah, yeah. they focused Especially on Henry. Especially on that neck. Uh, they finally got him up into the doomsday, but here comes Phineas to close line yeah. uh, animal. animal, so he gets him down, and then they take out Phineas, yes. and they're like, fuck this. So Hawk gets onto the fucking second turnbuckle, and uh, Animal's holding him. And yeah. they do a spike pile driver on, on uh, Henry Goblin, one, two, ah, three, <laughs> ah, three, by Ed and fucking King. Oh, they meant to do that. They they tried to break this man's neck. Yes. And really so your winners, the Legion of Doom, pick up the win here over the Goblins in a good match to me because I liked how they just beat the shit out of each other. They did. They, they just beat hey, the Hey, that made me them. like this match. It gets over right there. Tommy, did this get over? Todd Pettengill, Tommy. Oh, boy. He's giving away a casket full of ones. <laughs> uh, a casket full of ones, baby. <laughs> yes. All right. It was the... I'm glad we're getting to this. Yes. It was the SummerSlam Million Dollar Giveaway. Yes, it was. And what it was... It was, sure was a giveaway. There was a casket there, and it has a million dollars in it. Or supposedly a million dollars in it. Yes. A million dollars in one. Yeah, and we'll find that out. Uh, there's a million dollars there, and they have two people. They're live, and they have to pick a key... Uh, a number that has a key to it. Yeah. Off the little WWF logo. Did you see yeah, that? I like the uh, WWF logo. <laughs> yeah. And they called two people to uh, for their chances to win. Uh, but Tommy, the first one, never answered the phone. No. <laughs> the first... And missed his, missed his millions of more. Yeah. <laughs> and Todd Pettengill's trying to get it over. I like Todd. I do too. Yeah, he people... don't know shit about wrestling, but he tried. But he's entertaining. He was entertaining. At least he was fucking entertaining. Yeah. Uh, he goes, well, I guess they don't want a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and the next one they called, the fucking phone was disconnected. Yeah. Well, you ain't winning either. <laughs> well, you ain't winning either. Uh, and then they finally get somebody else on the phone. Like, hey, is this Bale or what the fuck his name <laughs> yeah. is? They're like, are you watching SummerSlam? No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> My cable company don't own it. Well, get a new fucking cable company. Yeah, well, get a new cable company if they ain't got it. And he chose fucking number. I can't remember what fucking number yeah. I'll just think of a number. Eleven. Yeah, whatever. And fucking, it and tried to get it. No, nope, didn't win. And then they get then they get a girl on the phone. Yeah. She picks a number. And she didn't win either. She didn't win either. Uh, and then they get the kid that was there. Oh, the little kid made me laugh. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think I was seeing Punk Kid's uh, son now. <laughs> Probably so. Yeah. yeah. Cause he cried. Oh yeah, he yeah. cried. Did you see? You seen him cry? Yeah. He goes up to it, tries to unlock the casket with with his number, and he couldn't get it. And then here He's... comes here comes Sable. Remember oh, Lawler? That's the best thing. <laughs> remember remember Lawler? Hey, <laughs> top figure. That's worth that's more worth than a million dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's worth more than a million dollars, there, pal. You don't know it now, but you will. That's what Todd said. It was <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> this was a funny ass segment. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> And then he started crying. I was like, is that seeing Pump Kid's uh, <laughs> guy's uh, son there? Because that's what we were him. And then, oh my God, this guy. This fucking guy. Fucking. With Sonny there. Sonny there. Well, Sonny and Sable yeah. were there. And fucking John Big Gill goes, oh, you look like a Stone Cold Steve Austin. And fucking. And fucking Lawler. He looks like Stone. With ears like that, I would want to be Steve Austin. <laughs> He goes, look at this guy's ears. You can get cable with those ears. Yeah, you can get cable with those ears. His fucking ears are all stuck in. It's fucking hilarious. Lawler's making me laugh. Back this guy to no hell. He goes, <laughs> he goes, maybe, maybe, maybe he can fucking hear the number of the key with those ears. <laughs> so, <laughs> he can get cable with those ears. But, uh, uh, and then, and then, then of course, they're Sable, they're Sunny, they're there. Uh, you know, uh, Sunny looking hot as ever. Uh, Sable looking at how yeah, she usually yeah, looks. Yeah. Grown. <laughs> Grown. <laughs> um, and of course, old buddy with the big ears, he yeah. didn't get it either. Yeah, fuck it. You can fly with those ears back to where you were, buddy. You want to fuck it, said. <laughs> and then here comes the guy who, who, who put the, you know, half a million dollars. He goes, it's number three. And then they take off the three, they, pull, they, they they open it up, and there's a millions and ones. Yeah, millions and ones. That's what you would have won. So I was like, oh, so they're going to the strip club, eh? Waller and Todd Pettengill made this funny as shit. 
And Sonny looking hot as Yes, Sonny looking, and Sable looking like a drone. Yes. Uh, this was a funny segment just because it was hilarious to me. <laughs> Especially while we're on cop oh. chair making fun of that Dumbo guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and go with the next match, Tommy. It is for the WWF European Championship. As the reigning and defending European champion, the British Bulldog defends his European Championship against the world's most dangerous man... Ken Shamrock. And this goes about if uh, Ken Shamrock wins, the Bulldog's got to eat dog food. He has to eat a can of dog food. Old Alpo sitting there on the fucking right in front of Vince. It wasn't Alpo. <laughs> it was Lo Lo no, Main or no, something. No, no, it was Gravy Train. <laughs> it should have been Gravy Train. It was Gravy Train. Uh, but uh, uh, some fucking fucking thing with like a with like a shovel in it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, where the fuck did we get this dog food? <laughs> yeah. Um... Well, this comes about because on Raw, um, fucking, like, uh, it was, it was Bulldog and Ken Shamrock, they had an arm, arm wrestling, wrestling competition. And, and fucking, you know, Bulldog yeah, headbutts him, yeah. fucking hits him with a chair a couple times, then, and put, put dog food all over yeah, him. Yeah, puts dog food all over him, so, so if, if Bulldog loses, he has to eat a can of dog yeah. food now. Um, you know, this match was not... You know anything fantastic? It was what it was. But it was what it was. I mean, Bulldog is is a tough guy. Yeah, and Shamrock guy. is a tough badass UFC fighter. You know, I put this on the same par as LOD and the Godwins. Yes, two tough motherfuckers beating the shit out of each other, and that's what this match was. Uh, Bulldog. <laughs> uh, well, we see that uh, we see uh, Kid Shamrock's bleeding from the mouth. Yes. And uh, Bulldog says, you know what, fuck this. So he, he gets, gets out of the ring. He gets out of the ring. And Shamrock's out of the ring. He grabs some of that dog food and just slaps it in the head of Kid Shamrock. And Shamrock goes... And Shamrock with, got, went off, goes after Kid, goes after the Bulldog like crazy. Starts uh, starts doing su start, suplex, suplexes. Starts doing him. suplexes. And then the referee's trying to get him back. And, fuck, and he goes... He goes Get out of the way! <laughs> he fucking tacks the referee. Yes. So this is a DQ. Yeah, he pushes the referee down. So this, so is, this a is a DQ. And and then Sherrock puts Bulldog in a rear naked choke. Yes. And he's choked him out. And here comes the referee. Here, co here comes the referees. Here comes Mr. Personality, Tony Gurria, Pat Patterson, Gerald Briscoe. Right? And then they're trying to get Sherrock off of him. And, and Bulldog's out conscious. And then he finally lets go. He goes to Pat Patterson, suplexes him. Pat took a good suplex. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah he did. Grabs Gerald Briscoe, took a great suplex. Tony Green goes, I ain't taking shit. <laughs> so he left. And then Jack Nolan took some big old suplex. Shara, get out of my way! Was the last one Mike Kyoto? No. Oh, yeah, then Mike Kyoto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he just says, get out of my way, and that's the end of that. Gets out of his way, he leaves. So technically, Bulldog wins by disqualification. Yes. So he can't. So he doesn't have to eat the. No, eat he the don't have food. to eat the gravy train. So guys, let's go ahead and go with the next match. Tommy, the next match is fantasy warfare. Yes, it's an eight-man tag. Eight-man tag. Tommy, it's going to be Los Baliquas, which is Jesus, Miguel, Harry Estrada. <laughs> Or Perez, sorry. Perez, Perez. Jose Estrada. And fucking Savio Vega. Civi Vega. Civi Vega. All of those equals look the same to me. So. Yeah. Versus DOA, Skull, 8-Ball, Chains, Crush. Uh, and DOA is uh, the Disciples of Apocalypse. Yes. And uh, let's just be honest here. This match sucked. <laughs> it sucked. It really did. This match sucked. And we should mention how this match does, th does come about. Well... Nation of Domination did have Savio Vega and Crush. Yeah, and, uh, and, Farouk, Farouk, and Farouk made me laugh on Savio Vega. Yeah. Remember you in the Puerto Rico? You know, you're hot as a chili pepper. Guess what? Your ass is fired today. <laughs> yeah. Farouk's awesome. <laughs> he goes to Crush. You were nothing in the WWE. Guess what? Your ass is fired in the unemployment line, too. You Crush. You can't fire me, punk. <laughs> you can't fire me, punk. Well, you said it earlier on the television. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... Um, so, you know, uh, 
Savio Vega gets the Los Mariquas as his and, group. And, and Crush brings in DOA. DOA, so it's kind of like Fantasy Warfare. Uh, nothing really special in this match at all. No. Uh, it was not that good uh, at all. Um, this match was horrible. You know, there's no real big star there. No. They're They're all kind of interchangeable. Um, this match was bad. Yeah, I, I didn't care for this match at all. And Tommy, the Nation of Domination comes through yeah, the crowd. Yeah, here comes Ahmed Johnson, who's part of the Nation. Yeah. I forgot he was. Yeah, uh, he was He was part of uh, the Nation. D'Lo, Kama, and Farouk. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Ahmed wasn't part of the Nation too long. He was no. there for a short stint, but he was there. Tommy, finally the Nation of Domination get fucking uh, upset, and here comes uh, was Chains. Yeah. And he hits for he hits, hits Ahmed, and Ahmed goes, what the fuck are you doing? And Ahmed grabs, and Ahmed grabs him. Tommy, tell me what happens here. He he picks up chains for the Pearl River Plunge, right? Yeah. Picks him up for the Pearl River Plunge. It wasn't the Pearl River Plunge. What was it? Pearl River Kneecaps. <laughs> Pearl River Kneecaps. Why? What happened? Well... Fucking Ahmed Johnson hooks him up for the Pearl River Plunge. He double hooks him. He picks double him hooks him. Up. <laughs> Puts him up with a goddamn fucking Pearl River Punch. Lands him right on his kneecaps. He lands him on his own kneecap. He couldn't even spread his legs enough to fucking pull oh, him fuck off. Oh, fuck, that belly was in the way. <laughs> that belly was in the way. And, well, he lands on his kneecaps. And, Tommy, did you see fucking the rest of this fucking fiasco where fucking, where fucking Ahmed's walking like fucking dipping? Well, first, Why'd you drop a man well, on first, your kneecaps, you fucking dumb fuck? And then they fucking throw chains in the ring. I think it was Miguel Perez, yeah. Harry Perez. <laughs> Miguel Harry Perez. Pins fucking chains one, two, three. So Los Baliquas wins this shitty eight-man tag. They win this shitty eight-man tag. And then tag. you see they're all fighting. And you see, here comes Crush with the goddamn bike trying to get everybody. You see fucking Ahmed limping. Well, that's what happens when you land fucking a wrestler on your goddamn kneecaps, you fucking fat oaf. <laughs> you fucking goof. No wonder you fucking got... No wonder you fucking suck. I've never seen anything in Ahmed. There was, a, there was a big smiles. Crush tries to run, run, run him and down. And that's the end of that fucking match. And you see fucking goddamn Ahmed fucking limping like an idiot. Yeah, well, that, this match sucked. It sucked. This this thing it, it entirely This was sucked. the stinker of the show right here. Let's go with the next match, Tommy. Simba made a vent, baby. We got WWF. It's for the WWF Intercontinental Championship as the reigning and defending WWF Intercontinental Champion, Owen Hart, defends his Intercontinental Championship against Stone Cold Steve Austin. And Tommy, there's a little stipulation for this one, too. If Stone Cold Steve Austin loses, he's going to kiss Owen Hart's ass. He's going to kiss Owen Hart's ass. And you know what the funny part is? What's that? The promo. Remember? Well, I beat Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, I beat Stone Cold Steve Austin. I beat Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> Playing that. I beat Stone Cold Steve Austin. And Austin goes, you know what, Owen? If I can't, if I can't whoop your ass, I'll certainly kiss it. <laughs> and uh, 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 but you know what? That ain't gonna happen, son. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'll say this: this was a great match. Yes, it was until uh, the uh, ending. Until the ending, and mostly everybody knows what yes. what, what what this ending is. You guys see Austin come off the rope. And Owen Hart sets him up for a tombstone pile driver. Hits him up, sets him up for the tombstone pile and, driver, and drops him right on his head with that pile driver. Drops him on the head with the pile driver, and Austin's not moving. Yep, Austin is. And you can tell Owen Hart's like, yeah, he's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, Owen goes, yeah, time to stall. Yeah, time to stall. And he's fucking telling people, yeah, now it's time for this motherfucker to kiss my yeah, ass. Yeah, he's gonna kiss my ass. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Tommy, I, we forgot to mention the beginning of the fucking match. Oh, yeah. When Austin's coming through the fucking thing, and Michael Cole goes, Mr. Austin, oh, Mr. Yeah. Austin. Uh, and, and Austin goes, uh, uh, um, uh, I, I'm going to kick Owen Hart's ass. I'm going to kick your ass first. Get out of here. He throws Michael Cole yeah. away. That was pretty good. Yeah, it was. But we do know that he, do, he does take the, the, uh, the pile driver. And if you guys ever seen this pay review, you know uh, it's what ended Austin's uh, career. To be it, honest, that's what really slowed his yeah career. Slow, slowed his career down. Um, and he lands on his head because uh, 
Owen did the sit down yeah. version of the pile driver instead of the, um, you know, on the knees like yeah. like how how Undertaker does it. And so all Owen Hart's stalling here. And you can see Austin's barely moving at all. He, he's moving. He's barely moving. And then finally, while fucking Owen's fucking hackling the fans. hacking the crowd, you see you see Austin on his Tom, elbows. Tommy, one of the worst. You see Austin on his elbows trying to go over there. And you see Owen, oh, he's trying to get me, okay. And he falls over. <laughs> yes. And fucking one of the worst roll-ups in the history of roll-ups. Yeah, one of the worst roll-ups in history. Which it ain't Austin's fault here. He, not, can't, he can barely move. Yeah, he can barely move. But he wanted to finish the fucking match. And fucking rolls up Owen Hart in one of the worst roll-ups in the history. One, two, three. And and Owen Hart loses the Intercontinental title to Stone Cold Steve Austin. So we got a new... Intercontinental Champion new, with Steve Austin. New Intercontinental Champion with Stone Cold Steve Austin. And, uh, you know, not only, I mean, you know, a sad thing to see, because this match was really good till that till Yeah, that and then you see, oh, what the fuck happened here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. goes, well, I'm leaving then. Yeah, he goes, uh, all right, I'm leaving. And, and then the referee's got to carry Austin. It's like, like, they're he, literally dragging he, Austin. He's dragging, because his foot is not even moving. Yeah. He barely got that fucking roll up on 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 uh, on Owen. On Owen, uh, you can tell he's fucked up big time. Yeah. Uh, he even said, you know, he could barely move his arms and his legs, and you could tell it when yeah. he's trying to walk through. Um, yes. It's it's you know, and and you know, you know this 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 is what shortened his career right here. Yeah, yeah. This is what pretty much shortened his career to the point where you know he couldn't really wrestle anymore because because of his neck. Yeah. So. Um, and then, you know, uh, eventually he does get his neck, you know, fixed to a certain extent where he can be... Wrestle a little longer. Wrestle a little longer, uh, and, you know, he's always going to have that nagged injury, yeah. so, I mean, uh, but, uh, you know, I honestly probably would have put this as probably one of the better matches on the card till that, till that yeah. happened. Yeah, yes. Uh, with one of the worst roll-ups in history. Yes. But uh, no fault of Austin. No. And, and I mean, I, I don't even blame Owen Hart for no. this either. It was I, an accident. It, it was a big accident. Um, but Tommy, let's go with the main event of WWF SummerSlam 1997. Yes, and it's for the WWF Championship as the reigning and defending WWF Champion, The Undertaker, <laughs> defends the WWF Championship... <laughs> Against Brett the Hitman Hart. Brett the Hitman Hart. With special referee Shawn Michaels. Tommy, I want to know. In the history of special guest referees. Oh, Shawn Michaels has been a referee for years. That would be a good job for him. <laughs> Tommy, why does the special referee Shawn Michaels get pyro? I don't know. When the <laughs> fuck did a referee get pyro? That's what I want. He comes out and does the whole fucking... Thing, and then the fucking shit fires up. Yeah, I, w I wish they did the one where where it goes. Yeah, I like that. One. <laughs> you like that one? But uh, uh, yeah. So uh, so Shawn Michaels gets pyro as the special guest referee. Uh, we do know how this match comes about. If Bret uh, Hart loses, he will never wrestle in the United States again. He will never wrestle in the U.S. Uh, again. And Sean Sean even said it. He goes. Uh, if I don't call the match down the middle, uh, I'll never wrestle in yeah. the United States either. Uh, so, uh, that's how this match comes about. Uh, Tommy? <clears throat> yeah. Great match. Yes, it was. Bret great. Hart and Undertaker put on a great fucking match. Great match. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed when Bret Hart did the uh, Canadian National Anthem. Yeah, he comes out and... And, and and they play the Canadian national anthem right here in Jazzy. Yep. Uh, and the crowd boos. And the crowd boos as usual. Uh, Tommy, did you like how when when, when he took off the belt, uh, gra uh, Brett grabbed the belt yeah. in the beginning, and he he he, he hits Undertaker with yeah. it. Yeah. And then what what he what he does is he pulls the jacket. Yeah. Over starts, Undertaker and starts fucking doing riding, the hockey doing, shit. Doing the hockey shit. And Undertaker finally gets gets his win back, takes off the fucking jacket and grabs him by the throat, <clears throat> and throws him and in the corner. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> there goes the suit bones. Uh, love that. I love it. Um, Tommy, during during the match, Tommy, a familiar face comes down to ringside. Yes, Paul Bearer. Yeah, Paul Bearer comes down here for some reason. Some reason. 
And Undertaker looks at him. And he announced. just gets out of the ring, punches Paul Bear, <laughs> yes. and, and, and fucking... And there goes Shaw Michaels. There goes Shaw. Get your fat ass to the back. <laughs> yeah, get your fat ass to the back. <laughs> and fucking Brett takes advantage while, while Undertaker's fucking hit Paul Bear. Uh, sharpshooter, uh, like, he's he's doing the figure four uh, against the ring post. Yes. Taking down, uh... I thought one thing was in it when he did the sharpshooter on the, uh, yeah. on, in the ring post. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a second, but he, but he's working on, uh, he's working yeah. on, on, uh... On the leg. On, on Taker's leg. He even does the sharpshooter in the turnbuckle. Yeah, on the ring post. Yeah, on the ring post. It looked and pretty cool. It, it, it looked awesome. Uh, Taker ends up, uh... Pushing Brett off of him, and he lands on Shawn Michaels. Yes, so Shawn's hurt. So Shawn's down for a He's few. hurting his knee. Uh, Brett hits the Undertaker with a chair. Yes. He get, he get, he gets a count, a one, a two, and a kick out. Kick out. And then, Tommy, Shawn sees in the ring that there's a chair. Yeah, and he goes, what the fuck you doing with this chair? I didn't do nothing with it. Yeah, I didn't do nothing with it. And then fucking, and then fucking, and then fucking Undertaker, uh, then fucking Shawn, uh, Brett Spat! He sees spat. spat in Sean's face. And you see the loogie all over Sean's face. Yes. And then Sean grabs the chair, swings it. Brett ducks, bam, knocks the under. Oh, stiff chair shot on stiff. the Undertaker. Stiff. And then Sean goes fuck. <laughs> yeah. And then he throws the chair, and Brett goes <laughs> pin. <laughs> and, and one, two. And you see Sean looking at Brett. One, two. Three, but my favorite part. Right when the shot goes down, you hear a fan. No way! No way! I said no way! <laughs> and the one the best the best part about it, they played it like three times. So he's right when shot kept count and when he did one, no way! No way on two! I said no way! And three <laughs> And they play that replay <laughs> three times, so you get to watch it three times. It's fucking hilarious. No way! No way! I said no way! <laughs> so, Bret Hart is the... And my favorite, with Bret Pitty. <laughs> yes. Right? Sean, Sean dips out of the ring, goes, fuck this, and he just left, right? And, and then, then Bret Hart ends up Undertaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he gets up and goes... <laughs> as he walks into the rope. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, Tommy... I enjoyed Brett as heel yeah. in 97. I did. Brett holds up the belt. Tommy, here comes the Hart Foundation yep. to celebrate. Trash is thrown in the <laughs> ring. Tra trash is thrown in the ring. And uh, you see fans leaving. Yeah, the fans go, fuck this. <laughs> and then you see fucking... And you see fucking Brad Pillman flipping all the fans off. Yeah, Brett, Brett and, uh, and, uh, and Pillman flip off the fans as they're leaving. <laughs> and Tommy, fade to black, WWF logo... And that's the end of SummerSlam 1997. Uh, let's go ahead and go with worst match on the card. Uh, Eight-man tag, Los Baliquas versus DOA. I concur. What would be your favorite match? I have two. You have two? Yeah. Who's it? Actually, three if you want to count. I have uh, the first match, Steel Cage match, Hunter Hearst Helmsley versus Mankind. Owen Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. And the WWF Championship match, Undertaker and Bret Hart. Um, definitely, uh, my, my favorite match, probably, to be honest with you, was Helmsley and Mankind. Yeah, I, I put that first. Second would be, uh, would be uh, Taker and Bret. Uh, and, that, and that's the cool thing, too. They started off the show great. Yeah. Like, fantastic. And they ended it great. And they, aided, and, and they ended it fantastically as well. I enjoyed this pay-per-view from top to bottom, actually. You know, Except uh, for the most bleak was match. And you know, Pillman and Goldust was okay. It wasn't wasn't mm. like horrible, horrible. No. But I mean, it wasn't uh, it wasn't. And uh, Godwin's and D and LOD good. Bulldog and Shamrock good. Uh, besides the finish of uh, Stone Cold and, uh, and oh, Owen, and that was good. That was good too. Uh, I thought this was a good solid SummerSlam. It's a good solid SummerSlam. I highly recommend watching this SummerSlam. But there you guys go, WWF SummerSlam 1997. Pay-per-view review. If you guys, oh, you know what's next? Uh, 2010. WWE SummerSlam 2010 will be coming up. Yes, it will. Very. Oh soon. boy. 
Oh boy! Uh, hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you guys give it a thumbs up. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to share it all over social media. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Russell Rampage 2. You can also add me, Tommy, and the cameraman Pops Yo. Uh, on Facebook. You, as mean, you mean the deer. <laughs> the deer. Shut up. <laughs> as well as, guys, also follow us on Twitter at Russell Rampage you can also, scooter. And you can also follow me and Scooter on Instagram. Oh, I'm not Scooter. <laughs> uh, he's and, right, he's hoopy. <laughs> and uh, also, I just want to give a little tidbit here. Tommy, about half of our viewers are not subscribed to the channel. No, what the fuck are you doing? You gotta subscribe. Hey, we got giveaways coming up here soon. Yes, giveaways. You're gonna have, hey, that's one of the rules. Live streams and giveaways are yes. coming up soon, guys. Guys, want might want to hit that subscribe yeah. button. Hey, it guess what? Be. WR Cafe will be coming up soon. Yes, uh, we got some, we got a lot of good stuff coming yes. up. Some yard sale videos, guys. You don't want to miss it. Uh, as more as long as and more pay re reviews, more yes. five questions. You guys know all about it. Yeah. So, guys, hit that subscribe button for more great videos coming to you guys. Uh, because we're that cream that rises to the top. Cream of the crop, and nobody does it better.